Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Stephen Roth and I'm a board certified oral and maxillofacial pathologist. April is Oral Cancer Awareness Month. Instead of posting every other week, this month I'll be posting weekly with topics specific to oral cancer and recognition of those out there diagnosing or diagnosed with oral cancer. Today's video will discuss the top five misconceptions about oral cancer. First, we have to get into that disclaimer, and that is that all opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone, and do not represent any organization that may employ me or that I may belong to, and that this video is for educational purposes only and should not serve as medical advice. Should you have any concerns about your oral or systemic health, please see your nearest oral or systemic health care provider. And with that being said, let's get into today's video. I figured I'd start out Oral Cancer Awareness Month with kind of a bird's eye view of oral cancer. I'll be going through the top five misconceptions about oral cancer that I have come across both as a specialist in the field and as a member of society at large. The items on this list don't come from any study or any article, but rather they're misconceptions that I personally have encountered and figured I would share, and they're listed randomly in no particular order. The first misconception is that all oral cancer is the same. While it's true that more than 90% of oral cancers are a type of cancer called squamous cell carcinoma, which is a cancer of the cells lining the mouth, there are many different types of cancer. In fact, any cell type that exists in the oral cavity can become cancer. These include cancers of salivary glands, muscle, fat, nerves, blood vessels, and even the cells that make teeth. The second misconception is that only smokers get oral cancer. Smoking is definitely a risk factor for oral cancer, and about 75% of oral cancers arise in smokers and former smokers. However, 25% of cancers occur in patients with no risk factors at all. Don't worry though, a thorough head and neck exam performed by your oral health professional is the best way to catch these early, even if you don't have risk factors. Make sure that your oral health professional is performing a head and neck exam for you at least once a year. Next up is that all oral cancers are treated the same and have the same prognosis. Treatment varies both between the types of cancer and the grade or severity of cancer. Oral squamous cell carcinomas, the most common type of cancer, are graded based on size, whether or not they involve lymph nodes or spread to distant sites, if they extend beyond any involved lymph nodes, and the depth of the invasion of the cancer into the tissue. Based on the histologic grade, the patient will be staged and treatment will be determined. Early stage oral squamous cell carcinomas are treated with surgery alone, while more advanced stage oral squamous cell carcinomas are often treated with surgery and chemotherapy with or without radiation therapy. The fourth misconception is that oral cancers are related to the human papillomavirus, or HPV. A majority of oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinomas are related to HPV, but these usually occur in the tonsil and the base of the tongue. This is past the tonsillar pillar in the oral cavity. These malignancies often metastasize early to neck lymph nodes, but respond very well to chemoradiation. In contrast, studies have shown that less than 4% of oral cavity cancers are caused by HPV, and those that are HPV positive do not behave any differently than those that are HPV negative. Our final misconception today is that oral cancers can be caught early or are only detected with special lights and equipment. There are a ton of oral cancer screening adjuncts out there to purchase. These have been widely studied, including this study by my mentors at Ohio State. And the conclusion is always that clinical oral exam by a trained professional always outperforms these adjuncts. Am I opposed to using an adjunct? Absolutely not. But these adjuncts must be used in conjunction with a visual clinical oral exam, and they should not result in additional charge to the patient, as a clinical oral exam is included in the routine exam billing code. These additional tests may result in false negatives, especially on the dry lip where cancer is missed by these, or false positives, especially in areas of inflammation where a patient is told that they have a worrisome lesion when really it was just inflammation that caused the test to be positive. 
Again, research has proven that the best way to detect cancer is a thorough clinical exam using your own two eyes. Those are my top five oral cancer misconceptions. Stay tuned on this channel as I release weekly videos this month in honor of Oral Cancer Awareness Month. To find out more about this month, you can use a link in the description to check out the Oral Cancer Foundation. While you're down there, feel free to hit the subscribe button, give this video a like. Thanks again for watching and be well.